Hey everyone, Jason with Hermetheus Coffee here, and I got a request to make a short video that shows how you can measure your idle noise in Artisan Software, the idle noise of your temperature measuring device. It's usually a thermocouple. Some people use RTDs. I've done a video that compares the two, um, but I didn't really show how you can measure uh, the, the temperature measuring device that you have. So I wanna go through that today. So I have Artisan up and you don't even need your coffee roaster on. You really just need your device, your um, interface device to Artisan turned on. So if you're using fidgets, just make sure your fidgets are on. If you're using Yachtos, make sure your Yachtos are on. And you can see in the upper right that my device is on because it's, it's measuring a temperature. And in this case, it's just room temperature here. And if I clicked the start button, I'm not quite capturing the entire screen, but that blue button there is, is the start button. Uh, you can kind of see that I'm, I'm now graphing a temperature. And if we look at this line, it looks like it's fairly stable. And we might look at that and say, Hey, uh, yeah, this is, this is a pretty decent thermocouple here, but it's really not. Um, it, this is a terrible thermocouple. And if, especially if you're using PID to control your heat, this is an unusable temperature reading. Um, but to really illustrate just how bad it is, we need to change a few settings in Artisan. So um, let's first go up to the, well, actually, let me turn this off so that I can change some of these menus here. You're gonna come up to config and go to your sampling rate. Uh, just make sure you don't have a really long sampling rate. I have it set to one second. You could even set that down to half a second, um, but one, one second or half a second is gonna be good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is reset the Y axis for our entire curve. So by default, the, the axis covers like 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, it's just, the axis is just too broad to show just how noisy our temperature reading is. So here's what we need to do. Take a look at what your temperature is. In my case, it's kind of fluctuating between 60 or 76 and 77 degrees, somewhere in there. And we want to change the Y axis so that it only covers about five degrees. And here's where we do that. You go to config axes and there is a temperature axis setting. So I'm going to set my minimum to 75 degrees and I'm gonna set my maximum to 80 degrees. And now while I'm, uh, while I'm uh, configuring the axes, the next thing that I wanna do is come into config curves and go to the filters tab. You wanna make sure that your smooth curves is turned off to zero and that you don't have smooth spikes set. This is gonna give you raw temperature data and it's not gonna try to pretty up your curves. It's just literally gonna graph exactly what the temperature probe reads. If you care about seeing the rate of rise curves, you can um, set your bean temperature rate of rise down to one second uh, delta span with zero smoothing, but I'm not even worried about rate of rise uh, for this graph here. And now with a vertical axis that only covers five degrees, let's hit start again and see what my, in this case, it's a Yocto device. Let's see what it, it is actually graphing here. You can see that it's really bouncing up and down pretty dramatically right now. And this is why this is an unusable device, especially for PID, because the software can't figure out what it should do. It's saying, whoa, whoa, the beans are too hot. And so it kills your, it kills your temperature. And then it says, whoa, whoa, way too cold. And so it, it, uh, it, you know, bangs your temperature way up. So your servo is just thrashing, trying to decide what temperature the beans should be when the real problem is, this is just a noisy, noisy, um, uh, signal that we're getting from the thermocouple. Now, there can be a number of reasons for this. There are just cheap thermocouples and sometimes they're just like this and because it's a, it's a trash thermocouple. So starting out with a quality measuring device is uh, an important step one. Um, but sometimes you get lucky and even a cheap Amazon thermocouple can give a clean reading. Um, but in this case, I'm using a Yocto thermocouple device and Yocto's are not electrically isolated from the USB port, which means that your computer's USB port goes into your common ground in the house and it can, um, it can create a ground loop. Essentially your thermocouple can create a ground loop with your PC. And so what we really need is an isolated USB port, but most computers don't have those things. So what we need to do is get an isolated USB port. There are tons and tons of these things on Amazon. They're all the same because they're all based on 
the same USB isolator chip. It's that little 16 pin chip right there called the Atom 3160. There's also a 4160. They're identical uh, electrically. So it doesn't, it does not matter which one you get. They're all going to have a chip that looks exactly like that flat little chip right there. And this is what you need if your issue is indeed a noisy USB port. And I just want to illustrate that. Uh, let me jump back into Artisan here. And I have my uh, USB isolator handy here, and I'm gonna unplug and then just plug in this isolator. I'm unplugged. And now I'm plugged back in. And now take a look at that reading. Look at that. It's just a beautiful reading. Just plugging in that isolator totally cleaned up this signal. And if we look in the, uh, it still looks like it's going up and down here, but let's look in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, at most, we're fluctuating by one-tenth of a degree. Um, and, and even from, uh, okay, all right, we just saw two-tenths of a degree, but it's still a much, much cleaner signal than what we had before. So, um, do do an idle noise test of your thermocouple device and, and set your axis to about a five degree span and take a look at how noisy your thermocouple is. And if it's as bad as mine, odds are a USB isolator can take care of your issue. Now, if you are a fidget user, the fidget thermocouple device is also not electrically isolated, but the vent hub from fidget is uh, isolated. So in, if you're running a vent hub, none of this really applies to you. You've already got an isolator in there. It kind of comes for free with the vent hub. Um, but if you're using a, a fidget thermocouple device and plugging it directly into your computer, yeah, this still absolutely applies. Um, I hope this illustrates why a USB isolator is important, and I hope it illustrates how you can very quickly measure what your idle noise is and uh, maybe get some better temperature readings out of Artisan.